Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and today we'll be talking about asynchronous system testing made easy in Java in our automation framework development with Selenium Java course. And again, this is a tidbits video of our framework itself. As you know, we are adding so many different extensions for our course itself and this is one such video that I would really like to bring. It's not just for this course, maybe it's for every different courses that I have discussed, the basic course of Selenium, where this particular feature is much required for them as well. It's kind of general video, but it's a tidbits within our course itself. And it is currently available free in both YouTube as well as in Udemy if you have purchased this course though. So let's get started. Selenium test synchronization. So far we discussed how we can wait for an element with thread.sleep explicit or implicit weight, custom control weight, and custom weight, etc. So we created our own custom weighting mechanism within our framework and we saw how to wait for the particular control or any different input that we give for. And similarly, we have our custom control within our framework that we can weight using just simple mechanism or we extended the custom weight mechanism within the custom control weight mechanism to do that. And we already know the explicit and implicit weight of selenium as well as thread.sleep, which is kind of dangerous. So we used all these different type of synchronization within our selenium code and we saw how it worked. But handling a synchronous application in selenium can be done not only this explicit and ex implicit weight or using custom control weight that we were discussing so far, but there is another DSL way of weighting application, which is a weightality. So testing a synchronous system is hard not only does it requires handling threat, timeout, and concurrency issue, but the intent of the test code can be obscured by all these details. Availability is a DSL that allows you to expose expectations of an asynchronous system in a concise and easy to read manner. And that's the power of availability itself. So that's really, really cool to see that there is a DSL way of handling or domain specific language way of handling these weighting mechanism. So if you remember in our previous videos of this course, we discussed custom controls and extending the custom control and also extending the custom control with Fluent interface where we were trying to achieve a more domain specific way of doing it. For instance, we waited for a control and then we click the particular button and then we again wait if we do and then we can wait for an attribute or scroll to an element and things of that nature. So it was like a fluent interface. At the same time, it was also domain specific. We did all these things before and that's exactly what availability also does. So availability is a library, it's more like DSL and you can also achieve the expected expression in much easier fashion and it is also asynchronous and also helps to wait for an asynchronous system. That's really, really cool. So we are going to write and code using a availability and that's going to look something like this. You can see that it has an await method and it has a message saying wait for the link to be displayed. And it has a method called at most where you can say like how long you have to wait for that, like 20 seconds, or maybe you can give any time span you want. And then you can also use a method called ignore exceptions where it will ignore the exception if there is any happens because the link that I'm waiting for does not display or that has a null value or something like that. You can also add an ignore exception method there. And then you can use the dot until for which particular element you're going to wait for and for what property and what is your expected behavior for that particular stuff to be returned for the waiting statement. So basically you're going to wait for the link login to be displayed as true. And if it returns true, which means you have to wait until it returns true for like 20 seconds. So if it doesn't return true, then it's going to throw you not an exception though, but it's going to throw you a message saying wait for the link to be displayed does not exist because this particular button has timed out. So that's really cool. And this is a DSL way of doing it. This is an added advantage of our existing code, but it is really cool to see that you can do a lot of customization with your code. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ IDE. All right, so this is the same code which we have been discussing so far in our course. And this is pretty much exactly the same video that we discussed in our Zillinium extension as well. So that's exactly the same code here. So the changes that we're going to make it's not going to basically be in the framework itself, but that's going to affect in our 
pages that we have worked so far. So if you go to the home page file, we already know that we waited for an element using the custom control methods like wait for visible, wait and wait and click, something like that. And we also get rid of these kinds of methods with just one liner, something like this, using the Fluent interface way. And now there is another way that we can make use of, which is nothing but the Fluent interface way, that you can wait using a DSL way of waiting for an element. Again, don't just mix and match with the existing code. You should use this particular code. It is no harm there. But the one which we are going to discuss right now, the availability, is an added advantage way of waiting. So basically, you can do the implementation of the particular code within this particular wait for visible or something like that to do things for you. But don't mix and match both of them together. So that's the most important thing. So what we're going to do this time is this. We are going to make use of the availability library. So what we should do to make use of this availability is to add the maven reference in the palm.xml file and I have already added the dependency over here. So this is the availability's uh, dependency that you need to add. So it's the org.availability and there is nothing which is the availability artifact. And then we also need to add the availability proxy which we'll be discussing later in this course. But as of now just add this which is going to be useful for as well. Right. So once these two things are added, then we can start writing the code for the availability itself. So what we can do is in order to write the code, the first thing we need to do is to use this await method. So you need to call that. And here you can either pass any parameter or maybe no parameter. Anything is fine. So I'm just going to say like wait for the uh, link to be displayed. So I'm just going to wait for that to be happened here. So that's going to be the waiting mechanism here. And then I'm going to wait for at least 20 seconds. So you can see once I hit dart, it basically brings different kinds of methods automatically. So all these methods are basically going to be mostly like callbacks, the until methods. So you can see there is an utmost, which has the time. And there's at least, again, there's a time and there is a between and then forever and there is a given when then statement as well and you can see automatically all these methods comes your comes for you and you can use all of them the one which i'm going to use is basically the at most method where i'm going to specify i need to wait for like 20 seconds so here you can give the time unit so if i hit dot you can see there is a seconds coming in and then you also need to wait until that particular link is being displayed. So basically what I'm going to do is this. So I'm just going to make use of our LNK employee list and I'm going to wait for that particular thing to be displayed and then I'm going to perform the operation. So I'm just going to use the until here. I can just use this LNK employee list and then you can go to colon here. So it will automatically bring all the different properties for you over here. So this is the way that you can get the properties using the particular instance variable. So you can do that. And then here, I'm just going to say is displayed. That's going to be the way. And then here you can say is. So this is one more ham crust matcher, which is available. And then you can say pass, which is nothing but the true. So this way, you're going to be waiting for this particular element to be displayed. And if it is displayed, then it is true. So you can just do something like this. So this is the way that you can wait for the particular element and then it clicks. That simply it is. So now I'm going to go to the employee feature. And then if I execute this, this particular test should be passing because that's going to be waiting very quickly though. It's 20 seconds. So it's 20 seconds, so which is a uh, lot of time though. So you can see that the currently the test is executing and because it is running in Selenium, it should be passed as well. So if I go to the browser here and if I see the live preview, you can see it has executed here, which is cool. And the test has got passed. You can see it is passed here. Cool. And now if I go back to the home page again, I want this to be failed though, because I don't want this to be passed so that you can, you don't really have to see the happy path though. So if I want to wait for maybe 
link login because once you click once you enter the username and password and if you hit the login button you don't again see the lo link login though so i'm just going to replace this to link login and then i'm just going to save it control s and now if i try to run this particular code so i can go to the browser and i can see what's really going to going to happen there so this time it's running in different container there you go the test got failed because there is no login link again and the test has got failed here so you can see that it says that no such element exception so this basically throws an exception to us this time so this exception is basically coming from selenium and this exception is throwing to us so that's exactly what this guy is doing to us now so this basically throws the exception if there happens any and it don't give us this information that we are looking for right so we basically need this one uh, to happen if the particular element does not exist or something like that so wait for the link to be displayed wait for the login link to be displayed something like that so you can do that here so this time what happens is if i use a method called ignore exception something like this so what happens is it won't throw the verbose information that you see in here rather it will give you the customized message that you gave in here right so i can probably save this i can go to the imply feature once again and if i execute this time let's go to the browser and see as well all right it seems that this has executed and it has got failed but this time it throws an exception to us in a different way so it says that the condition with alias wait for the login link to be displayed did not complete within 20 seconds because the lambda expression in the page home page that uses this particular link was actually null which was expected to be true but it is returning us null cool so that's the way that it automatically does things for us that's really really cool so this is how you can see that availability automatically waits for the things and it also can show us the verbose information and also you can ignore the verbose information and you can show the customized information over here but still it is more verbose to show us what has actually gone wrong during this particular piece of operation right so this is one way that you can wait for an element and it will throw you a message if it doesn't really exist that's one way of synchronizing your code and another way because we are currently using java 10 in our framework we can use lambda expression as well but somehow it mentioned here that the lambda lambda expression has failed you can use the actual lambda expression code in a very different fashion so basically the code is not going to be looking something like this rather the code is going to look in a different way that it is currently available something like this as you can see here we can use the await at most pretty much exactly the same way that i did before and ignore exception is again the same thing but just that this time i use the until asserted method here where i'm using a lambda expression this time and i'm saying assert dot assert equals and i'm just pasting this particular line over here the wait for the login link to be displayed which is nothing but this one and then here i'm saying lnk login displayed is actually true so this is how we used to do with all our assertions in our framework so far i'm just going to use the same assertion here not the ham crust assertion that we used before so this is more easier than how it was before like here you're using double co double colon and things to be uh, performing the operation but this is more straightforward way of how we used to do in our code so far in our framework that's exactly it is just that this is going to be using the test ng assertion and this one is using the hamcrest assertion so hamcrest assertion is different from the test ng assertion but you can still use the mix and match of assertions here using this until asserted method to make use of the same operation that we did before so it's pretty much exactly the same thing just that the change is we can use the lambda expression and also we can use our custom framework like test ng or j unit to do the assertions for us instead of using the ham crest assertion so basically what the availability basically do is it uses the ham crest assertion whereas you can still modify the code in such a way that you can make use of other assertion libraries to do things for you so if you go to the 
a Vitality website here in the GitHub. And if you go to the uh, usage guide here and go to the Java 8 or maybe the assertions, you can see they have mentioned that they are currently supporting assert J and fist assert as an alternative to the Hamcrest assertion. But you can still use the other third party as assertions as well. So it is actually possible to use any third party libraries that throws exception on the error. So it's still possible. And that's exactly what we did in our code to handle the assertion mechanism. So you can try to comment this particular piece of code. And now if you try to execute this code, it is also going to do exactly the same thing like how we did before. And this time the assertion is basically happening not from the ham crust. Rather, this time the assertion is actually happening from testng. So you can make use of the lambda expressions, testng, and other different custom test framework if you have it in your project to make use of the availability within your code. So that's it guys. This is how you can make use of availability within your code and use the DSL way of synchronization within your automation test code. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.